Welcome to the studio, Good Iron fans. I'm FAC reporter Blake Baker bringing you some midweek content. This week, we're going to be kicking off our power rankings that we'll bring you every week. And in the FAC, we're going to rank all your teams from one being the best and six being the worst. So let's kick it off with undoubtedly the best team in the conference, the Jackson Ironman right now, the only undefeated team in the FAC. They're 4-0, and they're outscoring their opponents by 122 points through four games. Defensively, they only allowed seven over seven points one time. That traditional Iron Curtain defense I talked about before the season really coming to life. And offensively, they got a killer rushing attack led by, led by early player of the year candidate Blake McCoy. Uh, a rushing attack that put up 382 yards just last week, and Blake McCoy himself has put up 593 yards and seven touchdowns the whole season. He also led his team in receiving last, last game. Hillsborough, number two, coming in surprising people. They're 3-1 uh, they're to start this season. They're on a two-game win streak. Their offense is also kicking it into high gear. It's led by Mason Swain, their junior quarterback. He's really becoming a proven playmaker. 285 yards rushing in just the first half last week against Williamsburg. He had touchdown runs of 40, 66, 67, and 98 yards. Explosive offense. He's got a strong offensive line in front of him, creating holes and allowing for that explosiveness. And Hillsborough, again, really got a lot of momentum going for them and really surprised some people early. Washington Courthouse, Blue Lions coming in at number three. They are two and two. They have lost two straight, but their quarterback play is what puts them in the number three position. Devin, Dylan Stewart, excuse me, is leading an offense that scores 33 points per game. He's got 15 total touchdowns, over 1,100 total yards through three games, and it's a good balanced attack on the offensive end. 440 yards on the ground from their running back, Jacob Rice, and their top three receivers have at least 200 yards and six total touchdowns. So you can see they're balancing the running game with the passing game really well. They turn the ball over a good amount, but they are still just negative one in the turnover margin, and they force two turnovers a game on the defensive end. They only allow 130 passing yards a game, so the defense is really saving them for this ranking, and is a and they're 500 up to this point. Now coming in at number four is the Chili Coffee Cavaliers. This might also surprise some people. The Cavaliers are two and two. They lost two straight. They've given up over 40 points in their last two games. They do have a very tough non-conference schedule. Opponents to date have combined for a 12 and four record. Brandon Mockmer has been good, but he's not been great. Total of nine touchdowns through four games, only 840 total yards to this point. The team musters just 99 passing yards a game, and the rushing attack is better, but again, just like Moffer, who leads that rushing attack, it's not great. And their defense allows too many big plays. In the last two games, they've allowed six touchdowns of 40 or more yards, so they got to shirt up on the defense. They have the coaching staff, the legendary coach Ron Hitton is at the helm. They got the athletes, they just need to put it all together. Now we get into the 0-4 teams. We have two of those, so at number five, we have Miami Trace. They're 0-4, like I said, they've scored no more than 19 points. They've given up 35 plus three different times. It's a team still trying to find its identity under head coach Jerry Williams, who's in his first year at the helm. And they wanted to spread it out a little bit more, uh, throw the ball around a little bit and rely less on the run. Brandon Arledge, 220 yards and a 39% completion percentage the last two games. Not great for him. Brady Wallace is a running back, 229 yards on 33 attempts the last two games. And Kobe Hughes has just over 100 yards receiving and he's caught, he has 57% of their passing yards the last two games. So if they're really trying to spread it out a lot more, they're not doing a real good job. Russ defense is really struggling. They've allowed nearly 700 rushing yards in the last two games alone. And in one of those games, they were lucky just to lose by five points. They're getting outgained by 320 yards the last two games. And it's hard to win when you have those type of numbers. And rounding out the countdown at number six is the McLean Tigers, and they're averaging just seven points per game. It's hard to win when you just score one touchdown every game. There are a lot of unproven playmakers. The one that's leading them, Darius White, 365 yards in the touchdown of the season, but that is by far and away the bulk of their production. Justin Osborne is very unproven at quarterback. He won the position battle in the offseason, but he has a one to eight touchdown to interception ratio and a 35% completion percentage on the season. Not very good. Landry Gray is only six catches for 120 yards and just one touchdown. The 6'4 target needs to step up if they're going to have any more attack through the air. They only have 820 total yards of offense this whole season. The defense doesn't cause a lot of disruption either. They only have one sack on the year, not a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They don't create a lot of turnovers, just two interceptions. And even though they've looked better, they haven't been able to, to get a win. So McLean rounds it out at number six. There's your first power rankings of the year for the FAC. But I'm Blake Baker, FAC reporter. We'll see you on Friday. Thank you.